New York tries to recover from the pandemic. The city's economic security is tied to its people's security, safety on the streets, and quality of life issues have become a major concern during Commissioner Dermot Shea's time on the job. That's right. So the current police commissioner, yes. uh, he's still here for a few more weeks, and I sat down with him yesterday, and I asked him about quality of life crimes, including repeat offenders, picking pockets. Be careful at the Christmas yeah. tree at Rockefeller Center. Mr. Teasley, I believe his name is, and the fact that I know his name should be all you need to know because we've dealt with this man for decades now. He has a job. You, you get up every morning and you think about the daily news and you come into work and, and you do a great job on, on good day. His job is to go out and, and steal people's property. For us to be in, a, in an environment where we know this and we're more worried about him than the people that he's affecting. He's affecting families, he's affecting tourists, he's affecting our city and the way of life. And, and you know, that's just one example emblematic of, of a, a bigger problem. So, how many times has he been arrested at Rockefeller Center? He's been arrested too many times to count. And he's back out there as we speak right now? He is back out. Picking pockets. That's what he does every Welcome day. Welcome to New York, right? What a great way to, you know, for and, people and, who are visiting our city. And the shame of it is, again, that when you look at um, incarceration levels, when you look at crime and who's doing crime, the precision policing model born here, you know, under Comstat with us, if you focus working with the partners on that small number of people, but he is that small number of people. And, and that's, you know, you have to contend with that. And if you want to stick your head in the sand, you're going to get this scenario that we have now. Let's talk about the young Columbia uh, University student who was fatally stabbed after, um, uh, I think he was a grad student at Columbia. Um, the person who did it, uh, a history of crime. On parole. Um, paroled out of this New York State prison system and went on a series of attacks one day about a week and a half ago um, that resulted in three individual incidents where, where people were victimized and, and one tragically lost their life. Is it true uh, that despite the crime in the Columbia University area, the students and the teachers don't want police there on the, the campus? Is that true? I, I saw a report of that. I, I couldn't tell you if that's true. I, 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 I tend to think that's a little bit of sensational. I, could there be a couple people? I can tell you that, you know, when you go back two years now to the, the murder of Tessa Majors and the amount of discussions back and forth between us and the NYPD, elected officials, City Hall, certainly the college up there, um, what we heard over and over was we want more police. Can we talk about the guy who was arrested for lighting the Christmas tree on fire outside Fox News? I think to most of us, I mean, you know, thank goodness no one was hurt, but it cost, what, $500,000? And this man got out on jail without any bail? I mean, you would have thought that they would have set the bail for what the crime cost, right? What happened? Yeah, I, I, I think there's, you know... The details change, but the story remains the same, where whether it's repeat offenders or whether it's people with mental illness. And, you know, I, I think that's got to be addressed at some point as well here because they are, they are intertwined at times. There's nothing wrong with wanting to give people second chances on the crime side, I would, I would argue, especially kids. When you are giving them second chances, from my view, there is no credible oversight or metrics to make sure that the alternative doesn't negatively impact on the public. So if you're going to say, let's not put this in person in jail, let's, let's give them this path instead, what are we doing to measure that that path works? How much does it cost? Are we just collecting money in programs or is it actually changing lives? Where's the data? On the mental health side, if you have somebody committing offenses because they need help, and we, we see it every day, of right? Of course we do. And it's sad. Not putting them in Rikers Island, I think we all agree with that. But what are you doing with them? 
And currently, it's bring them to a judge. No, don't put them in jail. All right, release them. If you think that that person is going to show up and attend you know, doctor's appointments and get treatment, et cetera, while you have them in the courtroom right there, you know, you hear about reimagining policing, that's missing the point. Reimagine the whole system. Get them the help they need right there. And whether that's an institution with proper social workers or care or a staggered release system, something. But right now, it's like, we don't want to put them in jail, put them back on the street, and then you're dealing with it every day. It's right. not working. Whether it's perception or reality, People feel unsafe in New York City. I mean, we're hearing shootings are up. If you take the subway, whether it's being pushed in front of a subway, whether it's robbery, uh, whether it's repeat offenders burning down a $500,000 Christmas tree in front of Fox News. The perception is that we're living in an unsafe city. What's the reality? Yeah, well, I, I think it's a little of both. I, I think, you know, when you look at historically, we remember what the city was like in the 80s and the 70s. Right. We're certainly not there. Um, but, but how close do you want to get? Like, when do you say, hold on, we got we got a course correct here? Um, I think it's long overdue to make small changes to get back on track, to have a fair city. This is not an either-or. Uh, situation here. We can do it all. We've proven you can do it all. But right now, you have the loudest, extremely small minority in the room putting us on a pet. They're driving the bus and they're driving us off a cliff. Like, people need to recognize, grab the wheel, and let's course correct. You want bail reform reformed, right? Bail reform reformed. There's no question. There's no question. Is there any kind of, do you feel like there's any kind of support in Albany right now? Um, I think it's getting better, but I think we're far from where we need to be. Eric realizes this. I think he was very smart. You know, he pivoted very quickly during the elections, if you remember. Mm -hmm. He saw what was happening, and, and he said, this is crazy. And, and that law and order type of, um, you know, election, uh, here he is as the mayor. There has not not been enough talking over the last two years. So I think he's a good communicator, and he's got to get the people in the room and find common ground. And, and if s small changes, it, it'll turn quick. Some of this just makes perfect sense, yes, right? It's 100%. common sense. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I've watched all three pieces. Uh, well done. I Thank mean, you. yeah, very, Thanks, yeah. Because it, the city is at a pivotal point right now. It is. I, and I can feel it coming back. I can feel a bit of a difference. You see a difference, Yeah, right? I do see a difference, but it seems hopeful, but there are some things that need to happen. I think it can happen quickly. And uh, cause I, I love so. New York. I know. We all do. I know. <laughs> and Commissioner Shea's last day on the job is December 31st. He says he is not retiring but moving on. He's got a new chapter. No matter how much I begged on camera and off, he would not tell me what he was Maybe doing. Maybe he's going to be on Bravo and, you know, the, the ex-commissioners <laughs> so, of New York City. You never know. <laughs> Reality show. <laughs> you never know. That could, that could be fun. All right.